Okay, so a couple of days ago, if you remember, I posted a sophomore season's expectations video, and basically I was talking about what we should expect for these rookies last year, and today we're doing something super similar. We're applying that same idea except to the 2021 NBA draft class, and we're going to be talking about what we should expect out of these rookies in their first season in the NBA. As I find myself in damn near reinvent myself with this daily mojo thing, yes, I said it daily mojo, except for Saturdays because bro, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't focusing on YouTube on Saturday. Anyways, as I said before in that video, as accolades are achieved and certain expectations are reached, people start to not only believe, but start to invest in whatever you think you're good at doing. Once any type of success is reached, of course, expectations follow. Now in this video right here, and really any video where I try to throw out some type of prediction, I always love to lowball the hell out of my predictions. That way, I don't have any crazy misses. And I'd also absolutely hate to be that guy to call certain players a superstar or whatever you want to call it in their very first season or their second or third season, unless they actually are. And that, as we all know already, is a super rare case. So go ahead, crack up, open your case of Coca-Cola or Diet Coke, because if we're being real, that's what you should really be on. And enjoy another episode of Daily Mojo. Tojo Tuesday, specially edited videos coming out tomorrow, bro. I got homework. So the number one overall pick in the 2021 NBA draft, is that him behind me? No, that's his teammate, Killian Hayes, but the point guard of that team, or elite, or maybe the shooting guard, is Cade Cunningham. You see, Cade Cunningham's summer league performance was pretty, I don't want to say disappointing whatsoever, but it was definitely good. I don't remember his stats off the top of my dome, but I know for sure he got up there in points, he shot if not 40% from the three-point line, he damn near shot 40% from the three-point line. And he was almost everything what I expected him to be. Now, how he was used at, on the Detroit Pistons Summer League team was kind of weird. And I hope that he's not used in the same way or liked that the Summer League coach decided to put him as. That role of him playing off-ball is just... It's just no, bro. Like, why do you have, what's the point of being 6'7 like that if you're going to be off ball? What's the point of being so blessed physically like that if you're going to be playing off ball, bro? He's super talented. And if need be, he can do that. We all know that. He's super capable and he played extremely well while being off ball. But when it comes to getting the most out of him, it's just not it, bro. And in my mind, I'm hoping that I don't see another scenario of, you guys remember when Luka Doncic was drafted and when he was drafted, it was clear as day, like, yo, this dude right here is way better than this point guard that we drafted the year prior, which was Dennis Smith Jr. And Dennis Smith Jr., he was just not really good at too much of anything outside of dunking the ball and attacking the rim in the NBA. And of course, in the NBA, that just doesn't cut it. And Dennis Smith Jr., as we speak right now, is currently He's, I, he's not jobless. He was just jobless a couple days ago, but I think he was he got some type of summer summer camp deal, whatever the case may be. He got some camp deal with the oh wow the Portland Trailblazers. And in my mind, I don't think the exact same thing can happen to Kellyan Hayes just because I believe Kellyan brings more value to a basketball team. But you get this, you get the idea, and you see the parallels and the similarities. Kate Cunningham is that dude, and he cannot get any less touches because of Kellyan Hayes. Killian Hayes has to learn how to shoot the basketball and score, point blank, period. Now, if Cade Cunningham is given the correct opportunity, which I'm just assuming, bro, Dwayne Casey is an actually good coach, then Cade Cunningham could be in the running for Rookie of the Year. I think he actually has a chance to win it. I think he could get off an easy, at least 16 points per game, and I'd hope to see five, six assists per game as well. But again, that just depends on the role that he's playing. But if, you're, if it's me, you know what I'm saying? If I'm doing Casey, I tell Killian, mm -mm, fuck up. like, I was almost cursed. Forget all that, bro. You have to learn how to shoot, and if you don't learn how to shoot, then you have to be packaged out of Detroit. Detroit, I think it's pretty well known that, like, yo, they ain't scared to package anyone up. They just literally traded Sekou Domboya, and I don't even know where he's at. I think he's on the Detroit Pistons, or I mean, on the Brooklyn Nets right now. And he was the longest tenure dude, and now Killian Hayes, who was 20 years old, or 21, one of the two, it's still crazy. He's the longest tenured in that locker room, and he's only been there. He hasn't even been there for a whole year. Crazy and scary to see, and that just tells you that Killian Hayes. I don't. This is not about Killian Hayes. This is about Kate Cunningham. Oh my God. Anyways, like I'm saying, he should be able to. Kate Cunningham should be able to go ahead and score a solid 16, five assists per game. You know what I'm saying? At least. I don't really expect him to go ahead and win that rookie of the year, but at the same time, how do I say this without putting too much pressure on him? I expect him to win that rookie of the year award. So 
that's that. Play in is super possible, but honestly, I feel more comfortable saying like, yo, they're low key an actual playoff team. But a lot of teams got slightly better. The end of Indiana Pacers got better. You can argue that the Washington Wizards got better. Um, <coughs> I just caught that was gross. But yeah, those are my expectations for Katie Cunningham, and that was way too long. I, I just got off old tangent on Killian Case. But anyways, number two world pick was Jalen Green, and if he is a horse, like, runner up for rookie of the year in my mind but he could easily snag that thing up because just because of like the amount of hype that he has and of course his skills skills over hype at the end of the day but those two coincided with each other is just a very beautiful thing and that is how you capture the hearts of all nba fans right there he has it all the juice the drip the gold the the diamond grills he just bought the other day and posted on instagram bro you know what i'm saying now with the Houston Rockets, I don't really expect him to get too many touches because, yo, like, let's be real, they still have John Wall over there. They still have KPJ over there. They have a beast down low in not Alfred Sangoon or however you say his name, but <coughs> Christian Wood is still there. So there's just a lot of points. There's only so many buckets that, be, that can be given out. And right now, as in the making of this video, John Wall is a Houston Rockets still, and Jalen Green has no choice but to be like the third option on that roster or on the start in the starting lineup or whatever the Houston Rockets are doing you know and because of John Wall being there or KP and KPJ being there unless John Wall's like more than willing to take a step back I expect Jalen Green to be <coughs> not a cult not a culture shifter or as much of a difference maker as Kate Cunningham because the Houston Rockets already had super good valuable young guards who can or guard who can change the direction of that organization but if anything what Jalen Green does in my mind is just give all the Houston Rockets fans all the reassurance that we need because KPJ has had a really unstable NBA career when it comes to him portraying himself as a professional off of the basketball court. So I expect a solid like 15, I don't want to say 14 because I know he can get more than 14 a game. He's just way too nice with it. But a solid 15 points, efficient shooting. I'm not sure how well he's going to be doing passing the ball because he still has... Yeah, he's gotten better, but he's still not great at it, you know. Uh, I just, it's just tough for Jalen Green because of the situation he's in. It's a perfect situation, but I just can't get over John Wall, bro. He's, I can't get over this wall, literally, bro. So the third overall pick was Evan Mobley, and uh, the Kevin Cavaliers are just another, they're the most complicated organization situation right now in the lottery, up to this point at least, and they just signed for or they traded for Larry Markin and I, and I think they signed him to an even longer contract they're paying him like 17 18 million a year for over the next three years or something like that which is crazy <coughs> oh, water bank you know what that means for the Cleveland Cavaliers to go ahead and trade for Larry Markin while they just drafted Evan Mobley it's super weird and awkward because they literally play the same exact position now Evan Mobley he has potential to play the center position, but he's just way too light on his feet, and he doesn't have weight like that, bro. And Larry Markman can't play no center position. He can play, he can barely play the power forward. <laughs> the Bulls tried him at small forward, like, bro. I don't know what he can play. He's a good basketball player when he needs, when he, when he decides to be. So. Evan Mobley, it's super hard to say what I expect out of him because I don't even know if he's going to start day one. How can you start a rookie like this when you just paid a former lottery talent power forward and a, lar a large amount of money and then go ahead. Bro, people are texting me. Ugh. Anyways, how can you pay this dude a large amount of money and not start him and then at the same time, vice versa, how can you draft a power forward? Okay. And at Number three, by the way, he's not like a late lottery pick. No, he was one of the best top three prospects. Earlier in the year, he was like top two, but top three prospect. How can you dress him like this and then not start him? Kobe Altman, you got some, I knew something was wrong with you. You look funny and you've been making funny moves. So I don't really know what to expect out of Evan Mobley. I'm gonna leave that to my audience. Anyways, third overall pick <coughs> was Scotty Barnes. And depending on what happens with Pascal Siakam and how he is expecting a big year out of OG Ananobi and it's just tough because they're players in front of these rookies and a lot of these players in front of these rookies are better than them right now you know so I don't I don't know what to expect out of them. maybe a solid six seven eight points maybe sometimes 
Scotty Barnes could be placed in the final starting in the final like in the last eight minutes of a game or whatever the case may be if he's that good as a rookie. But yo, what is wrong with this? Why does it keep on going off? Anyways, I don't really know what's going on. Anyways, I think that Scotty Barnes should average a cool eight points. 34% shooting from the field. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He needs to work on his shooting though. That's I'm not kidding about that. A solid eight points. You know what I'm saying? Four rebounds, four assists per game is super solid for me. And I expect him, he should be able to make at least the all rookie second team. And after that, his career just goes up from there. Kate Cunningham, J Jalen Green, uh, Evan Mobley, they are a lot to make an all rookie team easily. That's one thing that I'm willing to bet my soul on. <laughs> I don't know if that's that was smart to say. Lord, I'm sorry. Anyways, Josh Giddy, Jalen Suggs. Jalen Suggs first though, because he was picked at number five from the Orlando Magic, and Jalen Git or Josh Giddy was picked at number six by the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now I expect Jalen Suggs to have a really good rookie year. I don't know why, but I just feel like he's gonna be the most consistent <coughs> and stable rookie. Do I need another water break? I ain't gonna do that with y'all, man. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this video over with as quickly as possible. So Jalen Suggs, I expect him to have a really good rookie season because in my mind, he's the most solid and consistent rookie and he fits with literally every player on their roster. There's nothing on the court that he really can't do outside of shoot the ball at a good level. Defense, rebounding, playmaking, you run the transition, all that good stuff. I expect him to average a solid at least like 10 points per game in. Is he gonna lead his team to the play-in or something like that? No, hell no. Orlando, they're trash, bro. Orlando, trash. Cleveland, trash. The uh, Toronto Raptors, they're not trash, but they may be play-in worthy or eighth seed worthy. Same thing can be said about the Detroit Pistons, but they're just coming fresh off of like a 20-win season. So they're, they, they're supposed to be trash, you know? But they're actually good trash. Anyways, next player, Josh Giddy. As I just said, this man, I, I really hope that he doesn't become injury riddled or injury prone in the NBA. He played one, like two minutes of summer league or something like that and just got off a dunk and outside of that he has like no highlights so i can't really say speak too much about josh giddy but i hope that he becomes the secondary playmaker or the number one playmaker and the initiator that okc needs because shay needs help bro shay's like that i can see him averaging a solid maybe four or five assists maybe six assists during his rookie year okc does have playmakers like shay and then they got poku uh, but outside of that, that's really it. Oh, no, they don't have Kimber Walker anymore. Anyways, so yeah, that's the sixth overall pick. Franz Wagner, I don't really have real expectations on him because I wasn't high on him like that. But in my mind, he's just like a, a great gap filler and he's an elite role player, a tier one, two type role player. Is he a star? Hell no. All-star? Hell no. He's just one of those beloved players that you would love to have on your team. And for a beloved rookie, I can't really put real expectations on him. I don't expect him to make no all rookie teams or nothing like that. I just think that whenever he's on the floor, he's just going to make the Orlando Magic a better team if he gets the opportunity. Anyways, with the ninth overall pick, this is interesting, Davion Mitchell. Okay, I'm. this video is kind of getting a little too long. Davion Mitchell, I can see him averaging a cool like 9, 10 points per game, but what you have to keep in mind is that the Sacramento Kings are stupid packed when it comes to the guard, <coughs> the guard play. You got De'Aaron Fox, Tyrese Halliburton, then Buddy Heald. When you have those three guards who require the ball in their hands, Buddy Heald more or less, less because he's a he's one of the best shooters in NBA history. But I just don't see Davion Mitchell getting as much opportunity as he deserves because yo, like he's a 23 year old rookie and older rookies tend to be able to get off to a much quicker start in the NBA than guys like who are 19, 18, 20 years old. So I don't really expect too much out of him, but a all rookie second team? First is out of the equation, but second team, very plausible and super makeable. Then Zaire Williamson, I don't really, Zaire Williams, I don't expect too much from him. I honestly don't think he'll get too much playing time anyway, and in my mind, he's a project. <laughs> Chris Duarte, he is like a Malcolm Brogdon 2.0 and he's gonna have a great rookie year and I think he's gonna easily make a all rookie first team easy or second team. Either one is super doable for someone of him and his caliber of play. And I also think he's gonna play a huge part for the uh, Indiana Pacers because they did not really have a, I think he's already better than TJ McConnell. I was about to say they didn't have a backup PG, but they did, and this is a clear upgrade, if you ask me. Then there's that number 14. Oh, oh my God, I just remembered. I just skipped Jonathan Kaminga. 
Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga. I guess this is kind of a good way to end this video because tomorrow's video is actually going to be about Jonathan Kaminga and the Golden State Warriors. And for that, I'm actually going to give you guys a mean cliffhanger and tell y'all to see and wait till tomorrow, bro. So yeah, those are some of my expectations for these guys' rookie year. I hope you guys don't have any crazy expectations, and I know y'all, just like me, can't wait to see all these rookies play and show out what they got for. Now, that was just a lottery. I could dive into the most random names like Trey Mann. I don't think he's going to be that good in his rookie year, and he's honestly going to spend a lot of time in the G League probably with the way that he was playing in the summer league, but... At the end of the day, he's he's not expected to be a star or anything like that. Just have he's just expected to be a good six man. Then there's guys like uh, Josh Christopher, of course, all the guys that the uh, Houston Rockets selected, Usman Garuba. Then there's Cam Thomas, he's a bucket getter. There's Sharif Cooper, Jalen Johnson, Kai Jones. There's James Boykin. I didn't even get to him, bro. I don't expect him to have a crazy year either, but I expect him to have a good year and a year filled with highlights. Damn, I said this video was over like a minute ago and I'm still going. That's how you know I just love talking in front of the camera and to you guys. Anyways, before I like dra drag this video out, uh, those are just a few of my expectations. This is Off The Dome Mojo, Daily Mojo. This is just what I do to get these videos up and let y'all talk to me and hear my voice so I can talk to you back. Well, not really because you can't talk to me back because it's a one way thing. But um, just know that I appreciate you for following me on this little journey that I'm going through and uh, I hope that you continue to support and I hope that I continue to entertain you, bro. So yeah, outside of all that, I appreciate you for watching and uh, one more thing, I hope you make your day great. Until then, I'll get right with you.